Hey, 16, 16 September 17, we're here for another workshop day. Uh, today we're trying to catch up on uh, some of the work that's been lagging, i.e. clean up of the shop. We've been working a lot, pulling off a lot of parts. Uh, of course, the stuff's just been piling up on the uh, workbenches. So we've gone ahead today. I've initiated things as far as putting up some extra shelving uh, spaces and racking. So we're going to fill those up to, with some of the components that have been scratched around the shop and tidy up so we've got more of a work area to uh, actually work on some of the parts that we've been pulling off. And, uh, Need, need definitely restoration of work on them. Uh, as far as continuing work going on with the actual vehicle itself on the chassis, uh, Colin's been eyeballing up some things on the engine and that to, uh, that had to come off, so I'll turn you over to him and he can describe uh, what he's been up to on the rear of the engine. So today what we've pulled off so far is the rear pulley that uh, mounts onto the crankshaft and along with it is the harmonic balancer. We need to free up some more of the components on the rear of the engine so that as we begin to lift we can move the engine to the rear in order to clear it up a bulkhead so that the engine can be lifted out. So we've got the one part off now, the next bit that we're working on is the generator and again it's to free up some space so that we can move the engine to the rear to lift it all the way up. Uh, some of the other work we're going to have going on is uh, we've got a uh, new chap in today, he's enthusiastic, so he's been looking into the fighting compartment. Uh, you probably remember there from the photograph, that's all full of rusty plates and mounds of rust, so he's in there right now uh, cleaning and backing them up the, uh, the poundage of rust flakes that are down in there. Once we get that cleaned out the way, that'll expose the gas tanks and we'll be able to uh, figure out how to uh, lift those out the way and uh, eventually free up that area as well so it's all free to be uh, cleaned up and blasted eventually ready for the uh, new paint job and uh, overcoats that we're going to be putting on. Well, thanks very much for your time. We'll, get, we'll let you get back to it now, right? Yeah, all right then. We're uh, busy here and racket and mess and rust never sleeps. <laughs> Red is usually, that's handled red on its hand, the handle yeah. on is painted red too, isn't it? Yeah. That's usually indicative of lubricant. Yeah. Or oil. So I would, originally I thought it was oil, then when I saw that line, you thought it was and, but it is certainly going into whatever this housing is in the oil pan. Okay. So you, you, but the fact that there's nothing, the only small diameter line coming out of there or into there is this one. Well, blow in the end of it and I'll see if anything comes out the other side. <laughs> Check up front. I doubt that it's, because it's pretty loose in there. Might the, be rotted right off in there? Yeah, I imagine it's rotted at the rear end of the, uh, of the drive shaft tunnel. Yeah. Well, maybe, well, it's pretty loose. Well, we'll open it up carefully. Because of this front hose that's still on it. Maybe. Maybe not. Uh, I probably, if I, how tight is that? I'll just slide that sort of back into the cradle if I can. Maybe. Sit somewhere nice. Do you mind keeping a hand on that? Yep. And So it's the end of the day now. Uh, can you explain some of the treasure you might have found <laughs> in the tank? Well, we don't know about treasure, but uh, definitely uh, major, major components as far as the, uh, 
the engine system and charging and cooling system. Uh, okay, starting off with, we remove the main engine pulley. That's the pulley that's bolted on the, uh, the, the uh, rear side of the crankshaft of the, uh, of the engine. And of course, it drives all the, uh, the other pulleys and belts. Uh, what we're seeing now is actually the one pulling for the, uh, that ran the generator, which is one of the other items we removed today. Um, as I said, I was talking to you about before, we're uh, getting ready to pull the engine, so cleaning up more and more stuff off it so it's, uh, it's ready to go and more stuff out the way. We were considered that, uh, or we were worried that uh, perhaps some of this stuff could get in the way and perhaps they could uh, get, uh, get crushed if we were to use chains or something, or, or we're not too sure exactly what we're going to use for a lifting jig, but uh, seeing how they're going to have to come off eventually, we, uh, we started at it, got a jump on it. As I said, we've taken off the main uh, drive pulley off the end of the crankshaft of the engine. We also removed the uh, Bosch generator. As you can see, it, uh, that would have been mounted uh, backwards in the rear, rear right of the tank. And that drive was driven off that pulley as well, that drive well onto that pulley. Uh, the generator is in actually very good condition. It still turns freely. I've had a quick peek in the inside. It doesn't look too bad, so... Uh, I say in my uh, part of my uh, part of my training in life as an electrician, I've also worked on rewinding motors and worked on generators. So I'll be able to tear that down and inspect the inside, and uh, probably with no problem bring it back up to operating condition. Uh, the other thing we pulled out was on the uh, back bottom left of the engine. This is the oil, the engine oil cooling system. Uh, what it is is a heat exchanger i.e. this is a copper tank. The oil lines go through into the tank. They have a separate coil inside. It, uh, the oil goes through, circulates, and then comes back out again. And at the same time as the oil is being pumped through this internally and coming back out again, the cooling water from the uh, water system, the radiator system is being pumped through here. Uh, as, the, uh, as it goes across the internal coil of the uh, oil line, it uh, takes the heat away, transfers the heat into the radiator water, which goes through the radiators, then is cooled by the cooling fan. So it does the dual purpose of cooling the water and in addition, uh, cooling the, the oil of the, uh, the engine oil. Uh, another thing we pulled off today, which was actually ready to fall off, this is the uh, off the back of the gas tanks. And it's uh, basically the, uh, all the fuel lines go into here and it's the distribution block where the, uh, the fuel comes out of the tanks and then uh, goes through the distribution block and then goes to the individual uh, fuel pumps on the bottom of the engine, the engine having two, uh, two individual fuel pumps. I believe this is also, we'll have to investigate this mo some more, but we think this is the uh, transfer switch as well. So uh, I either would have been something hooked onto that so that when that turned that could switch, it act as a valve so you could switch the feed in between the different tanks as it came in, of the fuel tanks, I should say. Uh, one other item, interesting item we found, uh, we didn't know what it was. We found it right in the very back, down in the, underneath this rear pulley as we're pulling it out. But uh, once looking at it, we find out that we do believe this is the combination tool that the driver would use. Uh, we're not too sure on the square point what part that would be used. But this point apparently is what's used on the locks, on the hatches, i.e. the driver would, uh, when he's done, he could close the hatch, push that in and turn it, and that would lock the end of the mechanism on the hatch lids, and that's for all the hatches, the driver's hatches and the hat engine hatches as well. As well, there's a combination of this combination tool, there's a wrench mechanism on here. It's kind of hard to understand. I think you might have got some other pictures from it, uh, calling, showing it. But basically, this works on pointed armored bolts with, uh, with squared sides on it so that the driver could uh, fit that over and undo it. And that type of bolt was used on the gas filling ports on the side of the vehicle and as well for opening up a small little hatch on the rear plate armor of the uh, tank where once that was opened up, he could reach in and disengage the drive pulley that drove the cooling fan. So there's a little drive shaft in there that protrudes through and picks up, uh, couples onto the uh, drive shaft of the cooling fans. And it, uh, when one wants to open up the back hatch, it has to be disconnected. So that's what he would do. He'd use that to fit on the bolt, 
wind it open, open up the little hatch and reach inside and disconnect it, or to fill up the gas tanks. The gas tanks locked down by a funny shaped bolt with a point with a flat size, and that's what you'd use to unlock it, open them up so they could uh, do the fill up with the gas. Uh, in addition, today we did a lot of cleaning and vacuuming. That piece, um, well, there's a couple here. This is what remains of these uh, are the attachments, the exhaust manifold. Uh, you can see the remains of it here. That was a flexi piece of exhaust uh, pipe that uh, would be bolted onto the engine. And that flexi piece of exhaust pipe would uh, flex down to another, uh, another connection point. It would bring it out the rear of the tank and then from there up inside the muffler which was strapped. The, the, the muffler exhaust system that was strapped on the rear armor of the tank. Again, uh, in sad shape, but uh, the major component there, I, the, the, the flange is there. This is type of flexing hosing is replaceable. We can uh, find something similar to it and just have to weld it back on and match it back up again to it uh, when the time comes. Uh, again, uh, sadly, rust never sleeps and it's devoured these as well, but uh, the major components where they fasten on are there, so we can work with that. Um, yes, not much else we can show you except the uh, pile of rust we pull inside. <laughs> I don't know if you want to shot inside the garbage can or not, but there's not much to see. <laughs> well, thanks a lot for your time, Neil, and if you guys want to check out these work days, you can check on the Flak Panther Restoration Group's Facebook page, which is in the link below. Uh, there's also a donation link in the link below if you want to help out, uh, financially that is, and I guess that's about it. See you guys.